Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will learn about arterial fibrillation or AF. Let me warn you beforehand that this is going to be a long video. But trust me, by the end of this video, you will surely learn a lot about this important arrhythmia you will frequently encounter both in your exams and your clinical life. Before embarking on to the main topic, I will recap about normal cardiac impulse conduction that will help you in understanding conduction abnormalities in AF. Heart is a pump that receives and pumps blood from and to pulmonary and systemic circulations. Contraction of the heart chambers is coordinated by several regions of the heart composed of myocytes with specialized automaticity and conduction properties. Cells in the sinoatrial or SA node and atrioventricular or AV node have faster automaticity rates. In SA node, it is 60 to 100 beats per minute and in AV node, it is 40 to 70 beats per minute. While the His bundle and Purkinje fibers are characterized by rapid rates of conduction. Because it has the fastest intrinsic automaticity rhythm, the SA node acts as a pacemaker and is the usual site of initiation of the cardiac electrical impulse during a normal heartbeat. The impulse then rapidly depolarizes both the left and right atria as it travels to the AV node. Conduction velocity slows from 1 meter per second in atrial tissue to 0.05 meter per second in nodal tissue and this delay allows for the enough ventricular diastolic filling time. After the delay in AV node, the impulse moves rapidly down the His bundle at the rate of 1 meter per second and then Purkinje fibers at the rate of 4 meter per second to simultaneously depolarize the right and left ventricles. The atria and ventricles are separated by a fibrous framework that is electrically inert. So under normal conditions, the AV node and the contiguous His bundle form the only electrical connection between the atria and ventricles. This arrangement allows the atria and ventricle to beat in a synchronized fashion and minimizes the chance of electrical feedback between these chambers. Now coming on to the main topic that is atrial fibrillation or AF. Atrial fibrillation is the most common sustained cardiac arrhythmia. It is a chaotic, irregular atrial rhythm at a rate of 300 to 600 beats per minute. The AV node responds intermittently to allow conduction of impulse through it to the ventricles. Hence, we observe an irregular pulse and irregular ventricular rhythm on ECG. As you know that during initial two-thirds of diastole, filling of ventricle is a passive filling process and during the last third of diastole, atria contracts pushing further blood into the ventricles. In AF, due to the loss of this atrial contraction during the last third, the cardiac output drops by 10 to 20 percent. Epidemiology The prevalence of AF rises with age, affecting 1 percent of those aged between 60 and 64 years and increasing to 9 percent of those aged over 80 years. Why AF is important? It is important because AF is associated with significant morbidity and a twofold increase in mortality. This is because of its association with underlying heart disease and the main risk is embolic stroke. If the duration of atrial fibrillation is more than 48 hours, clots may have formed in left atrial appendage due to the stagnation of blood. These clots have the propensity to detach and embolize spontaneously or when cardioversion is done to restore sinus rhythm. Therefore, it is necessary to anticoagulate the patient with prolonged AF and prior to cardioversion. Pathogenesis Atrial fibrillation is a complex arrhythmia characterized by both abnormal automatic firing and the presence of multiple interacting pre entry circuits looping around the atria. So remember, abnormal automatic firing and multiple interacting re-entry circuits. Episodes of AF are initiated by rapid burst of ectopic beats arising from the conduction tissue in the pulmonary veins or from the diseased atrial tissue and it becomes sustained because of re-entrant conduction within the atria or sometimes because of the continuous ectopic firing. Re-entry is more likely to occur in atria that are enlarged or in which conduction is low. 
During episodes of AF, the atria beat rapidly but in an uncoordinated and ineffective manner. The ventricles are activated irregularly at a rate determined by conduction through the AV node. This produces the characteristic irregularly irregular pulse. The ECG shows normal but irregular QRS complexes. There are no P waves but the baseline may show irregular fibrillation waves. Classification of AF Commonly, AF is classified as paroxysmal, persistent or permanent. Paroxysmal AF is intermittent episodes of atrial fibrillation that self-terminate within 7 days. Persistent AF is prolonged episodes more than 7 days that can be terminated by electrical or pharmacological cardioversion. And permanent AF is continuous atrial fibrillation that does not end. However, it can be very difficult to identify what type of AF the patients have at the first presentation and this usually becomes clearer as the time progresses. Unfortunately for many patients, paroxysmal AF becomes permanent as the underlying disease process progresses. And this is partly because of electrical tree modeling, which is a process of electrophysiological changes that occur in the atria within a few hours of the onset of AF and which tend to maintain fibrillation. When AF persists for a period of months, structural tree modeling also occurs, leading to atrial fibrosis and dilatation that predispose to chronicity of the AF. Early treatment of AF can sometimes prevent the arrhythmia from becoming persistent. So do an ECG on everyone with an irregular pulse and also consider doing 24-hour holter monitoring in patients with dizziness, pains, palpitations to exclude atrial fibrillation and other arrhythmias if ECG there is unremarkable. Causes of AF Many forms of heart diseases can present with atrial fibrillation, particularly those that are associated with dilatation of the atria. Common causes of atrial fibrillation include heart failure, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, pulmonary embolism, mitral valve disease, and this is still the common cause of atrial fibrillation in underdeveloped countries. Then pneumonia, hyperthyroidism, caffeine, alcohol, post-operative, and electrolyte abnormalities like hypokalemia or hypermagnesemia. And rare causes that can lead to atrial fibrillation include cardiomyopathy, constrictive pericarditis, sick sinus syndrome, CA lung, endocarditis, hemochromatosis and sarcoidosis. Multiple causative factors may coexist such as the combination of alcohol, hypertension and coronary artery disease. About 50% of all patients with paroxysmal AF and 20% of patients with persistent or permanent AF have structurally normal hearts and no cause for AF is found and this is known as lone atrial fibrillation. Coming on to clinical features the typical presentation is with palpitations, breathlessness, and fatigue. But a fall in blood pressure due to air may lead to lightheadedness due to compromised cerebral circulation. And similarly, chest pain may occur due to reduced coronary perfusion if it occurs on top of underlying coronary artery disease. In patients with poor ventricular function or valvular disease, AF may precipitate or aggravate cardiac failure because of loss of atrial function and heart rate control. In older patients, AF may be asymptomatic and is discovered only as a result of routine examination or on an ECG. Atrial fibrillation may also present with systemic embolism as a first presentation and is a major cause of stroke in the elderly. Signs of atrial fibrillation include irregularly irregular pulse, the apical pulse rate is greater than the radial rate, and the first half sound is of variable intensity. There may be signs of left ventricular failure like basal lung palpitations. Examine the whole patient to look for other signs like those of thyrotoxicosis as atrial fibrillation is often associated with non-cardiac diseases. Coming on to investigations, assessment of patients with newly diagnosed atrial fibrillation should include a full history, a physical examination, a 12-lead electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, and thyroid function tests to exclude thyrotoxicosis. ECG shows absent P waves, irregular baseline with fibrillation waves, and irregular QRS complexes. Echocardiographic assessment is useful to identify left atrial enlargement, presence of clot in left atrium, mitral valve disease, poor LV function, and other structural abnormalities 
Thyrotoxicosis is an unusual but potentially treatable cause of AF and thyroid function tests shall be done on every patient. Additional investigations may be needed to determine the nature and extent of any underlying heart disease. Now coming on to the management of atrial fibrillation. When atrial fibrillation complicates an acute illness such as chest infection or pulmonary embolism, treatment of the underlying disorder will often restore sinus rhythm. Also correct any electrolyte imbalances if present. See if the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable. In hemodynamically unstable patients, that is, the patient with atrial fibrillation has adverse signs like shock, myocardial ischemia, syncope, or heart failure. Follow the ABC protocol of resuscitation, that is, secure airway, maintain breathing and circulation, and then do DC cardioversion by providing synchronized shock, starting at 120 to 150 joules. If DC shock alone is unsuccessful, this can be combined with amiodarone. Heparinize the patient but do not delay treatment in order to start anticoagulation. In stable patients, two strategies are available for long-term management of atrial fibrillation. One is rate control and other is rhythm control, which means conversion to sinus rhythm and then maintaining it. Randomized studies in heart failure and in older patients have shown that neither strategy has net benefits compared with the other. Rate control. Rate control aims to reduce heart rate at rest and during exercise, but the patient remains in AF. In achieving rate control, the target heart rate shall be less than 90 beats per minute at rest. And calculate target heart rate for exercise by using this equation, that is subtract H in years from 200 and this will yield the target heart rate during exercise. Rate control is achieved through the use of beta blockers like bisoprolol or non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like parapamil or diltiazem, and these are the medications of first choice. If these medications fail, add digoxin, and if needed, then consider amiodarone. Digoxin as a monotherapy in chronic AF is only acceptable in sedentary patients, but it is not sufficient for rate control during exercise and be aware not to give beta blockers with calcium channel blockers because it may cause heart blocks. Coming on to rhythm control. Rhythm control may be appropriate if the patient is symptomatic or have congestive heart failure, patients less than 65 years of age, first presentation with lone AF, recent onset atrial fibrillation of less than 48 hours duration, and atrial fibrillation from a corrected precipitant, for example from electrolyte derangement. Rhythm control is achieved either through electrical cardioversion or through pharmacological cardioversion. For electric cardioversion, do echocardiography first to exclude intracardiac thrombi. It is an increased risk of cardioversion failure, like in a patient with history of past failure or past recurrence. Give amiodarone for 4 weeks before the procedure and 12 months afterwards. For pharmacological cardioversion, flaconide is first choice but it is contraindicated if there is ischemic heart disease or structural heart disease for example scar tissue from previous MI. In such cases use IV amiodarone instead. Catheter ablation techniques can be considered in refractory cases or where antiarrhythmic agents causes side effects. Pulmonary vein isolation can disconnect the pulmonary veins from the left atrium electrically, preventing ectopic triggering of left atrium. Maze procedure can be done to abolish re-entry circuits. Another procedure is AV nodal ablation with pacing, which is also known as pace and ablate strategy, can be done to avoid transmission of abnormal impulses from left atrium and is considered where atrial fibrillation is persistent. Ablation techniques prevent atrial fibrillation in approximately 75% of patients with prior drug-resistant episodes, although a repeat procedure is sometimes required before this is achieved. This is an attractive treatment option when drugs are ineffective or poorly tolerated, but the procedure may be complicated by cardiac tamponade, stroke, phrenic nerve injury, and rarely pulmonary vein stenosis. In patients with paroxysmal AF, if there is infrequent symptomatic paroxysms of atrial fibrillation that occurs less than once a month and systolic blood pressure is more than 100 mm of mercury and there is no past history of left ventricular dysfunction, pill in the pocket method of treatment may be tried, meaning that flaconide, sotalol, 
or propaquinone may be used on required basis. Anticoagulate and consider ablation if patient is symptomatic or frequent episodes of paroxysmal AF occurs. Anticoagulation in atrial fibrillation is a very important topic. I have made a separate video on this topic. To watch this video, please click the link in the top right corner of your screen or in the description below. And this is all for this video. Although this was a long video, but I hope that you might have learned something useful. Do not forget to like it, share with your friends and subscribe to this channel.